Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation, a special one. We have x to the fourth power equals the quantity 4x minus 5 squared, and we're going to be solving for x values, real and complex. So a quartic equation is supposed to have a maximum of four roots, some of which may repeat. And I'll be presenting two methods. The first method will be a little painful and incomplete. We'll just talk about some alternatives, okay? So first method. We have x to the fourth equals 4x minus 5 squared. Let's go ahead and expand the right-hand side. Pretend we don't know how to handle this in an easier way. So this is going to be 16x squared minus 40x plus 25. And then put everything on the same side. x to the fourth minus 16x squared plus 40x minus 25 equals zero. Awesome. Now, at this point, you have a quartic equation, which is a depressed quartic, meaning that there's no x cubed. So that's nice. If you want to use the quartic formula, be my guest, but that's pretty complicated. But that's one way to approach it. Another way to approach it is if there are any rational solutions to this equation, then we can use the rational root theorem, which basically says, in this case, since the coefficient of x to the fourth is 1, any root is going to divide negative 25. So you can go ahead and check factors of 25. In this case, it's going to be plus minus 1, plus minus 5, and then plus minus 25. Since 25 is 5 to the second power, 2 plus 1 equals 3 gives you the number of positive divisors of 25. And of course, there are negatives. That's why we have a total of 6. But one thing to always keep in mind in polynomial equations, that one thing you should always check is the sum of the coefficients. What do I mean by that? So let's go ahead and add these coefficients. The coefficient of x to the fourth is 1. The coefficient of x squared is negative 16, the coefficient of x is 40, and the coefficient of the constant term, or just the constant term, is negative 25. If you add these numbers up, you're going to notice that it's 41 minus 41, which is 0. So the sum of the coefficients is 0, and remember, in a polynomial, the sum of the coefficients is found by p sub 1, I mean p of 1, <laughs> which is 0. This implies that x minus 1 is a factor of p of x, okay? P, p represents our polynomial here. So, this is nice because we do know that one is one of the solutions. What about the other ones? So, you can go ahead and do a couple different things here. For example, you can go ahead and divide this by either polynomial, synthetic, long division, short division, whatever. Just divide it by x minus 1 and there will be no remainder and you're going to get a cubic. And then solving the cubic obviously is a lot easier than solving the quartic. And after division, you can still try the rational theorem because there might be more rational roots uh, which you can find by using the same idea. Make sense? Okay, so that's basically one way to approach it. Another way to approach this would be after factoring, I mean after expanding, and you got to remember here, x cubed is missing, so that's kind of nice. You can go ahead and write this as follows. You can basically say, hey, this must be the product of something like this x squared plus ax plus b and x squared minus ax plus c. Now, why did I use plus ax and minus ax? Because there's no x cubed, so they need to cancel out. Make sense? Great. So, this is nice because we only have three variables a, b, c. This is going to end up uh, be, uh, being a cubic equation because you're going to get a system, and when you try to solve the system, you're going to get a cubic. Which, one thing that will make this problem easier, again, with rational roots, is that just assume b and c are 5 and negative 5, or 1 and 25, uh, so on and so forth. So you can basically say, hey, suppose b is 5 and c is negative 5. And then you're only going to have to find a from here, which can be found, even though it cancels with the x cubed, uh, because it's going to be distributed all over the place, right? So it's going to be a lot easier that way, so we can kind of you know, just write it this way and that way. And of course, this may not work. What if this doesn't give you any solutions? Then this way of factoring will be incorrect. And you just got to try until 
you find the answer. If this doesn't work, you're going to try 25 and 1, 25 and negative 1, I mean. And then if none of these work. That means there are no rational roots. But we do know there are rational roots because x equals 1 is one of them. So there must be more. Make sense? Great. So there's also another way to get a, a cubic equation by uh, looking at this expression by using Vieta's formulas. And Vieta's formulas tells us what? The product of the roots, the sum of the roots, since you know one of the roots is 1, so you can basically write like, okay, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is going to be negative b over a, which is 0, and you do know that one of the roots is 1, so the sum of the rest is going to be negative 1. And then you also know the product is supposed to be negative b plus c negative d over a, and then that's going to be the opposite of this, which is 25, but you know one of the roots is 1, so the product of the other three is 25. You see what I'm saying? So you get basically three equations from here, and when you try to solve it, that's going to turn into a uh, cubic. Okay? Great. So you can proceed in so many different ways to get the answer from this cortic. Again, cortic formula is probably the last resort, but by doing this system of equations, we're kind of arriving at a uh, cubic which is the goal when you're trying to solve a quartic, you try to reduce it and then go that way because it's easier. But with the quintics and higher powers, what happens is you don't get simpler equations. Stuff gets more and more complicated. That's why quintic equations are not solvable in general. But of course, there are, there's a class of um, solvable quintics, which I didn't find much on the internet. But anyways, there's, there must be some books or some Galois theory stuff, whatever, some, some stuff that talks about it. If you do know any good links, please share them in the comment section down below. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about the second method, which should be pretty quick. And I'm pretty sure uh, you guys already knew that, at least most of you knew that. Uh, but uh, because it's kind of straightforward, isn't it? So kind of like we're kind of beating around the bush here, but the goal was to show you a couple different approaches for cortex in general, especially the depressed ones. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to square root both sides, and then uh, that's going to give me a simpler equation. Or you can do the following. You can subtract this, set it equal to 0, and then factor this using difference of two squares. This is x squared plus 4x minus 5, and then x squared minus 4x plus 5. Because x to the fourth is x squared squared, right? Great, so now we get the following from here, two quadratic equations. Actually, when you tried this, you would get the answer, right? Okay, great. Even if you didn't assume they were 5 and negative 5. So from here, we get two equations. The first one is going to give us, one of them is 1, obviously. The other one is negative 5. So you're going to get x sub 1 is 1 and x sub 2 is negative 5 because their product is negative 5. That's how I know. And the other equation is not going to give you real solutions. The solutions are going to be complex and by using the Poisson's law method, I, I think I made a video, somebody asked in the comments, can you make a video? And I did. Anyways, if I find the link, I'm going to share it here and down below. And from here, we get basically 2 plus i, let's call that x sub 3, and the other one is going to be 2 minus i. So those are going to be all the solutions to this equation. Let's go ahead and check them out in Wolfram Alpha, and then we'll finish up. And as you can see here, those are going to be the solutions, obviously, when this Cortic was written in this form. Uh, that's what we worked on pretty much. And those are going to be the solutions, real and complex. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.